praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You are the most excited congregation I've seen. Tonight, as the Lord has done it for others, where are you now? It's your turn. He will sweep away every sin that heaven has not planted in your life. Thank you. I see that choir brother jumping. A miracle will jump on you. Everyone, everyone tonight, shout miracle. Father, we well, thank you tonight. I will bless your name. We well, thank you, Lord, that everyone, workers, leaders, pastors, families, newcomers, everyone tonight, a divine touch from heaven. Yeah. We're asking, oh Lord, that the songs of joy will come up in every heart tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're building your church. And I pray everyone will be part of the church you're building. Yeah. Justified, sanctified, glorified, Filled with the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we pray that you'll produce the great pattern of Christ in every life. Confirm your miracle in everyone today. No sickness will go back home with you. No oppression will go back home with you. Confirm in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. In the evening session of our retreat, now we have what we call revival session. Other people call it crusade. Other people call it time for the power for your hour and the hour of your power. Whatever you call it, heaven will drop upon your soul. Power will come upon your life. You will never be the same again. Tonight, we're continuing with a series with that Christ, our Passover. With that Christ, our peace. And tonight, Christ, our pattern. Christ, our pattern. Have you noticed in life, the pattern is very important. In the textile industry, those who are making clothes, and those who are making carpet, and those who are doing any textile thing, they raise a pattern. And they use that pattern and reproduce that then you have what you want to produce. In the building industry, we have pattern. You have this kind of block, and you reproduce that. It's a pattern. And then, even in the mobile industry, that is where you make cars, this particular brand, they have their pattern, that pattern, and that pattern. Everything is about pattern. Look at the grass. Anywhere you see the grass. If you take that grass and you look at it, you'll see a pattern. Any other kind of grass you see, any other place, it follows that pattern. Look at the skies and look at the stars. You'll find that that star, this star, this star, they look alike. It is a pattern. And look at humanity. You have humanity anywhere, anywhere in Africa, anywhere you have them, you have us in America, Asia, anywhere. There is a pattern. God follows a pattern. And now for spiritual life and for our heavenly life, He has given us a pattern. And everyone that God recreates, he looks at Christ 
and then he forms another person christ christian christ christian and then he makes christians out of that pattern of the lord jesus christ that's why tonight we're looking at christ our pattern first peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 21 for even hereunto were ye called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. christ the very son of god all the other sons and daughters of god they follow that pattern christ our pattern look at first john chapter 3 in first john chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not look at verse 2 there beloved now are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear. Look at this. We shall be like him. He is the pattern. The son of God. And we are sons of God. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's why tonight we come to present Christ to you. And if you are just coming and you need the salvation of God, salvation is coming to you today. You are saved already. You are a child of God. Sanctification will come in your life. I was waiting for a greater amen than that. You are saved. You are sanctified. The power. Of the Holy Ghost will come in Jesus name now Christ is the pattern for our peace and so we follow him and we have peace like he had peace Christ is the pattern for our purity we follow him and we have purity like he had purity and Christ is the pattern for our power and we follow him peace purity power and then we have the power of god christ is the pattern for our health for our healing we follow him and by stripes we're healed christ is the power for our freedom he is free we are free christ is the power for our life of dominion and he has dominion i have dominion I have dominion. Christ, our pattern. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, Christ, the pattern for his pardon for chaste people. Number two, Christ, the purifier of his purged peculiar people. Number three, Christ, the power. For his preserved purposeful people. Now, before I go on to number one, look at every every line there has people at the end, people at the end, people at the end. What kind of people? Pardoned people, purchased people, purified people, purged people, peculiar people, preserved people purposeful people your life will be purposeful Amen. now we need to understand if we're healed and that's all we have how are we going to be the pattern for others like jesus christ is a pattern for us and so the whole package of the very fact that christ is our pattern our sins are pardoned our lives are redeemed and purchased our hearts and souls are purged it makes us peculiar people 
identified as special people and it makes us powerful it makes us preserved it makes us purposeful and that's what the lord will do for you tonight i said that's what the lord will do for you tonight your life will be purposeful you will know you are living for something and you have a goal you will reach that goal now tonight i'm going to deal with the subject like the scripture deals with the subject christ our pattern then at the end everything you need we're going to pray and there's going to be a channel from heaven to earth and everything will come from heaven channeled into your life it will turn your life around number one now number one christ the pattern for his pardon for chaste people we're looking at first john chapter one and i'm reading from verse one from verse five this then in the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all look at verse six verse six says if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness uh -uh, we lie and do not the truth in verse seven it says but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin three things number one divine pardon for repentant sinners number two divine purchase of regenerated souls number three the divine purpose for the restored states look at number one divine pardon for repentant sinners the lord is waiting for everyone you know why he created us he created us for himself and then like he's using the radar he looks at everyone and then you vanished out of the radar they cannot see you again you went off from the race of revelation from heaven and he couldn't see you again and he's saying he's mentioning your name where are you where are you where are you and eventually you say i am here you're so far away my hand the blessing wants to touch you but you are far away then you say i come isaiah chapter 55 but says seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near look at verse 7 in verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and your righteous man is thus and let him return that's all you do that's all you do some people say how do i get saved how do I get my sins forgiven? How do I get a new life? Return. Return. You are with the wrong fellow there. He's called Satan. Come out of his hand. Return. You are in the wrong place there in idolatry, in tradition, in the occultic farm over there. Return. You are in the wrong environment there where you are practicing evil and you are living like an animal. And it says, Return. And then you look up, you say, Lord, I return. And it says, Return unto the Lord. And He will have mercy on you. I didn't hear your amen. He, the merciful God, the loving God. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish. 
you came here so you will not perish let me see your face there i said you came so you will not perish congratulations you will not perish because is a merciful God he will have mercy upon him let him return to our God for he will abundantly pardon give me a good amen there amen. abundantly abundant he is rich in mercy he is rich in love and everyone that comes the love of God and the mercy of God will cover you it will pardon your sin Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at divine purchase of regenerated souls. You say purchase, yes. It purchases you because you've been in the slave market and there you have been suffering and there the pressure and the oppression of the enemy has been upon you you tried to come out you couldn't come out and then god has mercy on you and then he sent christ his only begotten son to pay for your redemption that's the price he paid is blood that's why as you come and you are regenerated that word let me break it down for you the word regenerate remove that re generate god generated you originally brought you forth originally like generator generates light and now what happened the oil is all gone the batteries all gone the things that will propel all the things inside that will generate light everything is gone and so there's a repair and so there is a refurbishing and so there is a renewal and then everything that that engine generator had lost everything comes back and it is regenerated to come back to where it was originally now the lord generated your life originally peace happiness joy lie but then something went wrong that everything that generated the peace and the joy and the lie everything just floats away and now life is dreary and life is confused and life is sad and life is gloomy and then you come you are coming to the Lord tonight. And then, as you now come, He regenerates you. That's what it means. You are regenerated. Life comes back. Peace com comes back. Joy comes back. Vigor, vitality comes back. Purpose comes back to your life. Thank God, I am regenerated. I am regenerated. Now, the purchase of regenerated souls is when God regenerates you. Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 2 in Exodus <clears throat> chapter 15. Reading from verse 2. The Lord is my strength is now regenerated and the lord is my son he has become my salvation he is my god and i will prepare him an habitation so he can live on the inside of me my father's god i will exalt him 
how did that take place verse 16 look at verse 16 fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm they shall be as steel as a stone till thy people pass over O Lord till the people pass over which thou hast purchased which thou hast purchased as the Lord buys you redeems you and purchases you by the blood of the Lamb everywhere you get to you'll be passing over Huddle, you'll pass over. Mountain, you'll pass over. Red Sea, you will pass over. Amalekites, you will pass over. Deadness or whatever, you'll pass over. Sickness and infirmity. I said sickness and infirmity. Cancer. Ulcer, tuberculosis, swelling, paralysis, arthritis. When you are purchased of the Lord, and now you become, you are totally now in the hand of the Lord. You pass over. You pass over. And tonight, where are you? Praise the Lord, you are passing over tonight. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at divine purpose for restored saints. Divine purpose for restored saints. As people have been far away, like the prodigal son, hunger catches up on them. And they are like prodigal son, friendlessness catches up with them. And they are prodigal sons, loneliness catches up with them. And they are prodigal sons, tears flowing ceaselessly catches up on them until they make up their mind. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of your hired servants. At least I'll get food, I'll get water, I'll get shelter, I'll get somebody to care. And then he rose. And he came to his father. And as he came, he was totally restored. And all the problems in the far country, everything taken away. And when you make up your mind and you say, enough is enough. Somebody there help me shout, enough is enough. enough. All that hunger, all that thirst, all that suffering, all the tears in the night, all everything, all the sorrow, help me shout, enough is enough. enough, is enough. Tonight, all those things will come to an end. Amen. And so he came. What's the purpose? The divine purpose for a storage saves. In First John chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Don't let that one shock you. That, that's what happened. Actually, Adam and Eve when they were created they were created to have dominion over the whole earth and that was the place the position that satan held before 
God gave him authority and dominion. He lost it. And now that dominion passed to Adam and Eve. And Satan became jealous. And then came to Eve and said, As God said, never discuss with the devil. He is jealous of the good thing God has brought into your life. And this good thing you have got, and the one you are getting tonight, Satan will not get it out of your hand. Eventually, as the story continued, Adam and Eve sold themselves into the hands of Satan. The seed, God drove them out of the garden of Eden. And all their offsprings who have been coming after that time, they have been sinning and sinning, and the peace of the garden of Eden, they don't have. The joy, the supply, the pleasure, and the goodness of the garden of Eden, they do not have. The dominion that originally Adam and Eve had, they do not have. And now suffering, sickness, calamity, accident, many, many bad things. Because he that sinneth, he that committeth sin, is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Oh, but something now has happened. I said something now has happened. Where are you? I said something now has happened. Christ has come. The Lord Jesus Christ has come. And he had a purpose in coming. Look at that, look at that. In verse 8, for this purpose. Somebody shout, for this purpose. To restore you. To renew you. To rekindle the life of God in you. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy. That he might destroy. That he, Christ, our Passover. Christ, our peace. Christ, our pattern that he might destroy, tell me, the works of the devil. Blindness, is that the work of God or the work of the devil? Somebody said, I don't know. You don't know. When God created man, he didn't create him with blindness. It's not the work of God. Blindness is the work of he came to destroy all the works of the devil. Paralysis. Why did God create leg if he didn't want us to walk? Why did God create hand if he didn't want us to use it? Why did God create ears if he didn't want us to hear? Why did God create mouth if he didn't want us to talk? Paralysis. Witherness, withering of the hand and then the deafness in the ear and the darkness in the mouth is the work of the devil if you if you accept that say yes, yes. and then all those internal diseases and the thing that causes premature death i hear that that one i saw him two weeks ago but now he's gone that's not the work of god all the works of the devil in your life from tonight tell me what will happen <laughs> destroyed 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 for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil now if somebody has the works of the devil and is covering it up and then we say prayer time has now come and the Lord Jesus Christ our pattern and our power 
is going to destroy the works of the devil and then he's dodging is embracing the works of the devil is protecting the work of the devil and is running away from prayer how will the work of the devil be destroyed i'm appealing to you that tonight when we begin to pray you will expose that work of the devil unto the almighty god tonight is your night of miracle and the lord will destroy everything in jesus name for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil let's come to point number two point number two christ the purifier of his porch peculiar people now why why do i need to be purified why do i need to be purged why do i need to be peculiar you know my brothers and sisters men and women friends here tonight everywhere there are things you'll not be allowed to do even in this world if your hands are not clean what i mean is any doctor will tell you that there's bacteria almost anywhere everywhere and when you go to a place where your hand has been affected contaminated by bacteria bad bacteria when you open the door the door knob also has part of the bacteria when you put your hand on the door on the wall that wall also has part of the bacteria and when you cook in the kitchen and your hand is filled with bacteria part of that goes to what you're preparing and when you're going to let's say you are a medical person and you're going to operate on somebody your hands have to be clean cleansed and even then you have to wear the gloves that will shield away all the bacteria in fact they will, you will remove your shoe and then you will wear a special kind of footwear that will make you free of bacteria only then can your life be useful to the patients the lord is look and, and now look at this we cannot see the bacteria but they're there and if your hands are brought under a powerful microscope you will they are alive and they'll be there in the millions and god can see that and he wants your life he wants my life to be useful that's the reason why he purifies us he purges us he makes us peculiar people so that all those invisible bacteria in the hand in the mouth that's why they said this time we shall cover our mouth and you cannot see anything flying out of your mouth with the droplets that come you will not see but they're there that's why the lord said come on here i want to make a special peculiar person out of you and i will purify you i will purge you and then you'll be totally renewed and you'll be fit to be used as a great instrument in the hand of the lord in jesus name Amen. useful i said you'll be useful Amen. peculiar in the sight of the lord three things we're looking at here number one the purging of his precious people number two the purifying 
office for chaste people. Number three, the positioning of his peculiar people. Number one, the purging of his precious people. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power look at this when he had by himself purged our sin only he can do it an angel cannot do it for you a minister cannot do it for you you cannot do it for yourself when he and by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. If you allow him tonight, he will purge you. I said he will purge you. On the inside, he will look for everything that has the nature of of spiritual bacteria, uncleanness, Adamic nature, depravity, he'll cleanse everything out of your life. He will do it. I said he will do it. Now, a patient gets to the doctor and then he says, I need something here to be extracted, taken away. And then the doctor said, that's all right. That's what I'm trying to do. He says, lie down. So it's no, I don't want to lie down. He said, close your eyes. I don't want to close my eyes. He said, be in this position. I don't want to do that. And you want me to operate on you? If the Lord is going to operate on you, and he's going to purge you, he's going to cleanse you in normal New Testament language, if it's going to sanctify you, when it says surrender, you surrender. When it says submit, you submit. When it says lie down and be still, all the struggling, all the fighting, all the argument, and all the supposition. You know, some people go to the doctor and they try to tell the doctor how the doctor should do his work. Now, you can't do that. Doctors don't accept that and it doesn't work. If you knew all that knowledge, why did you come to the hospital? But as the Lord is going to sanctify and purge and purify you, you surrender everything to God and you submit to God and He is the master operator. He'll operate on your life. When He had purged our sins. He'll totally purge you tonight in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience Purge your soul, purge your spirit, purge your inner man from dead works to serve the living God. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22, and almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood, his blood. And without the shedding of blood, is no remission it is the blood that will purge you and cleanse you look at uh, number two here number two the purifying of his purchased people now the people that confuse salvation and sanctification before you can clean a fish you have to catch the fish the fish cannot be in the river 
And while the fish is in the river, you are trying to cleanse the fish. No. You catch that fish first. Bring that fish out of the river, out of the water. And it is after that you can cleanse the fish. Catch the fish. Save that soul. Christ saves. And after you are saved, then he cleanses and sanctifies. It is salvation first, and then the sanctification. We're looking at Malachi chapter 3, reading from verse 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He Christ he cries our sanctifier he cries the purifier he will siege as a refiner and purifier of silver he shall purify the sons of Levi and put them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Look at Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying, he first of all pardons us. He gives us peace at salvation. And now he purges and purifies us at sanctification. Salvation by faith. Sanctification by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Look at number three here. Number three, the positioning of his peculiar people the positioning of his peculiar people now God is a God of order it's a God of organization it's a God of heavenly management and he puts each one where he belongs he puts the sinner there, does not mix oil and water, does not mix good and evil, classifies them there. And then those who are saved, those who have been pardoned, he brings them, this is their class. And then those who are sanctified, purified, he puts them peculiar people sanctified people purged people purified people he puts them in their class and those in class one or class zero sinners there are things they cannot claim from god then class zero those in class one saved there are things they can have. And those in class two, those who are sanctified, purified, there are things that are peculiar to them. And those in class three, who have received the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus told his disciples, and he said, don't go out yet, tarry. Stay in Jerusalem until ye be a deal with power from on high. The class you belong to now, saved, sanctified. You cannot be my witnesses all over the world. You don't have the power. You don't have the connection. You have not got the comforter. You are in a separate class. God is a God of order. And now, after you are pardoned, 
and after you're purified he now positions you as god's peculiar people we're looking at titus i'm reading from chapter 2 and in verse 14 titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works there are works you cannot do until he purifies you you become a peculiar person in the sight of the lord you might try to do it you might say what he can do b can do what a man can do a woman can do you might try to say i'm a believer he's a believer i can do all things you might even quote i can do all things through christ who strengthens me but you'll find the strength is not there because you have not come to the right class the positioning of his peculiar people you'll be zealous of good works and your good works will not be like a good intention like a good a blown up balloon and a little pain will punch it and then all the air all the strength everything is gone peculiar people zealous of good works and i pray if you have been saved born again you will come to this new class Amen. Yeah. God bless you. I just wanted to hear your voice that you are still there. That's why I normally want an amen coming from Port Harcourt. Yeah. Let's go back. Let's go now to point number three. Point number three Christ, the power for his preserved, purposeful people. Christ is the power for his preserved, purposeful people. You see, when you have this taste of Christ, that he has pardoned you and he gives you peace. He has purged and purified you and he gives you purity. Now, he preserves you. You become a purposeful person there are people you ask them what do you want to do in life i don't know you have finished school what next i don't know they don't have any purpose no goal you're born again what do you want to do and achieve in the kingdom of god i don't know you're now saved you are sanctified, you have strength, you have power, you have revelation, you have the knowledge of the word of God. What will you become in the kingdom of God? I don't know. You will know. Yeah. Purpose. Purpose. You have a direction. You have a pathway. You have a goal. You have an ideal. You have a destiny. And you are going on to that destiny Christ the power of his preserved purposeful people look at Romans chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 14 from verse 4 it says and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead verse 16 in verse 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek three things number one the power of sonship 
in Christ. Number two, the power of sanctification for the consecrated. Number three, the power of standing without compromise. Look at number one. Number one is the power of sonship in Christ. John 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God. He gave power to become the sons of God. The people that received him. And they receive a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And they receive the provision of the salvation of the Lord. He gave them power to become the sons of God. Even to them the believer on his name. It will happen tonight. As you say, yes, I'm fed up with the life of weakness, life of falling and rising, life of today, I act like a son of God. And then the next moment, I talk like a son of the devil, like a chameleon. I take up the culture, the nature, the appearance of my environment and you say enough is enough I'm going to be the son of God as you come and you receive him he give them power to become 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 they were not like that before but conversion salvation makes them to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name look at point number two here point number two the power of sanctification for the consecrated Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 Hebrews 13 Verse 12, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, which people? Saved people, pardoned people, those who have become the sons of God, that he might sanctify those purchased people with his own blood, so far without the gate now he's done that for everybody why is everybody not sanctified purified purged because they have not consecrated look at verse 13 he says let us go forth therefore let's leave where we are and we're stagnant and we're just there and we're not moving let us rise up go and surrender go and submit go and consecrate and go and give yourself unreservedly unto the lord let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach look at verse 14 for here we have no continuing city but we we'll seek one to come we're purposeful we're seeking a city that has many mansions let not your heart be troubled believe in God believe also in me in my father's house how many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself so that where i am there 
ye will be also for here we have no continuing city but we we'll seek one to come heaven that's your destiny you will get there the things of this world will not cloud your vision number three here look at number three the power of standing without compromise he saves us he sanctifies us and then we we'll stand a pharaoh will come and challenge moses you will stand the canaanites will come and challenge joshua he stood you will stand a philistine will come and challenge david he stood you will stand nebuchadnezzar will challenge shadrach Meshach and Abednego and he says if you hear that sound of the musical instruments of Babylon if you fall down and worship well and good but if you don't tell me where is that God that will deliver you out of my hand they said, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you. Do what you want to do. You will see what you have never seen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Nobody had ever challenged Nebuchadnezzar like that before. He was angry. And he commanded, they should heed that furnace seven times over. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were dead to him, dead to Babylon, and dead to the furnace. They were looking at him. He commanded hefty men, great men, powerful men, mighty men, courageous men out of his kingdom. Bind them, throw them into the fire. They were looking. They were not perturbed. They were calm. They were courageous. They will not compromise. You will not compromise. And those that threw them in the fire, the flame of the fire, consumed them. Those who try to throw you into their furnace, they will not be alive to tell the story. And so they threw them in. And when they threw them in, all the robes of Babylon burnt up. You didn't hear that one. And they stood up. I will stand. I will stand. And they were walking in the fire. The fire of the world will not have any power on you. The curse of the world will not have any power on you. The occultism of the world will not have any power on you. And Nebuchadnezzar said, that will teach them a lesson. No, sir, Nebuchadnezzar, this will teach you a lesson. And so he peeped in, and he looked into his furnace. His furnace was powerless. 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 Over Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then he turned and he said, My commissioners and ministers, come and tell me. How many people do, did we cast into the furnace? They said three. He said, am I seeing right? Come, you have good eyesight, come and help me see. One, two, three, four. And the appearance 
of the fourth person is like the Son of God. He will be with you. Fire, sickness, calamity, evil, accident, gang, curse will not have any power on you. Because you will stand without compromise. I will stand without any compromise. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, if you are saved, 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 and you don't bother about sanctification, about purifying of the heart, you don't have all the armor of God upon you. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, but none of them will conquer you. Verse 13. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil day evil day will not crush you will not destroy you will not stop your journey halfway the evil day will not make you crum crumble compromise and then we cannot see you again I'll see you again. Yeah. On the mountain top of victory, I will see you again. Yeah. When God begins to count his saints, you'll be among the number, I will see you again. Yeah. And when people are giving testimonies and they're coming out, I will see you over here. Yeah. When the power of the Almighty God will be manifested, where are you there? I will see you. And having done all to stand. What does that mean? Having done all, let me explain to you. For me now, after this retreat, at the end of Mon Monday morning message, having done all to stand. I'll be standing ready for the next assignment. Yeah. Now, up to you. Where are you? I haven't done all. I haven't done all. I haven't done all. You will not be tired. You will not be weak. You will not say, I barely go through that. I can't do anything. No. I haven't done all. Having done all, you stand. No compromise, no cringing, and there's no cowardice, there's no hiding somewhere. Having done all, you will stand. Amen. Now, today, 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 we're going to have one level of prayer now. After that, another level of prayer. I'm all here for you tonight. Yeah. And then, uh, finally, another level that will not knock off the hand of sickness out of your life. Yeah. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You are born again. You are a child of God. And the Lord has spoken to you today. There is pardon. There is peace. There is salvation. But 
come to the next class there's purging there is purifying there is sanctification and he wants you to lay everything on the altar and consecrate yourself so that the same power heart confidence backbone that will never compromise or shift for any pharaoh any nebuchadnezzar any herald that same heart purified purged sanctified the lord will give unto you you know your life you know what you have been in the past tonight is the night of your sanctification amen it's about a nice close you are telling the lord oh lord now i understand and i want this purity of heart this sanctification i want it now lord i'm sure i am saved but i want to be sanctified purified wherever you are i'm praying this special prayer for you today to make it happen in your life you raise up your hand where are you looking for you if you are raising up your hand you will stand up sanctified purified made holy that all the things all the cobwebs of the evil spider that is be clouding you all around you and then the purity sanctification is not a no so definite experience and you want that now the lord will do it as you're standing up whisper to the lord there i surrender all whisper to the lord there i surrender all all to you my savior i surrender all lord i come i submit like a patient submits completely to the doctor for the doctor to perform the necessary operation no struggling anymore no argument anymore i surrender all lord cleanse me wash me purge me take me out of that class of weakness and bring me to the class of purified purged sanctified peculiar people thank you lord you cannot fail you promised you see it as the refiner as the purifier upon the house of levi i now come i identify with those people or fully consecrated unto you purge and purify me now thank you lord i believe i accept i confess i embrace it's done 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 it's up that hand as we're standing on father in the mighty name of jesus i come to you now on behalf of everyone i pray by faith purify sanctify them in jesus name give them assurance that the work is done their heart their mind their thoughts their dreams their desires purge everything in jesus name punch them into the way the highway to heaven and i pray courageously without compromise you keep on leading them until you take them to heaven 
confirm it oh lord in jesus name i pray god bless you can sit down mark the day the day of your sanctification the day of your purging the day of your experience of purity and sanctification now everybody say now those who are just to come in now we must count one before we count two we cannot come from the zero class and just jump into class two we need to meet the lord our savior who pardons us who takes away our guilt who takes away our condemnation and today in that day if you are just to meet the lord at the threshold of the kingdom of god this is for you if you have been like the prodigal son and you stretch away and you are coming back home welcome the wonder of his welcome will take effect in your life right now let the church say amen, amen. and so it's about and I is closed he will forgive you he will pardon you every evil thing you've done every evil thing you've said the lord will forgive you now and the lord will restore your soul even far away from the kingdom it's bowed and eyes closed if you want to come in with this prayer i'm going to pray with you a special prayer that launches you into the kingdom you raise up your hand this is different from the other one i prayed this is for those who are coming into the kingdom fresh raise up that hand god bless you there wonderful god bless you there if you're raising up your hand please stand up and then i'll pray this prayer of pardon forgiveness salvation conversion transformation for you stand up now wonderful god bless you god bless you stand up stand up this is your chance father we well, thank you you are god of love you so loved these people who are in the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever will believe on the lord jesus christ as savior you will save them they'll have everlasting life lord i pray for every one of them without exception on this special day of salvation i pray forgive their sins cleanse them completely let the new life of christ come unto them in jesus name give them assurance of salvation now that all their sins are forgiven and pardoned and totally forgotten let the assurance and the joy of salvation come to every one of them right now thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord it is done in jesus name we pray keep on standing our chorister ushers and counselors they are there to help you and now after this session i'll come back i'll tell you a story and then you're coming into that story and all your sicknesses tonight they are gone in jesus name we're asking our pastor pastor andrew sagi to help us for the counseling period 
at this time before I come back to pray for your sicknesses to vanish away. Amen. Hello, dear. Where what an awesome moment is it again tonight with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui here in the city of River State, Port Harcourt. We just heard the message where the man of God led us through salvation prayer. I want to put it to you tonight. If you are there, you just said a salvation prayer with us. I want you to pick up your device and go to www.com dclm.org slash connect with Christ. Fill that form. Share your salvation experience with us. Once again, the link is www.dclm.org slash connect with Christ. Trust me, you do not want to be left out in this train of salvation. That link you just filled is to give us details of your salvation experience, where you stay, your information, so that we can reach out to you and bring the love of Christ closer to you. In a very short moment to this time, the man of God will be coming back live to pray the miracle prayers on us. And I'm telling you, on this ground, a lot of miracles have happened. The blind has received their sight, the lame has walked, the, 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 the barren has received the miracle children, Many powerful testimonies, and trust me, you don't want to be left out. I want you to stay glued to your screen, bring your family members together, bring your loved ones together, and Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui will be ministering life, the miracle prayer, the miracle prayer to us. Once again, bring in your people, invite your loved ones, and after the miracle prayer, do not forget to share your testimonies with us. Go to the comment section below on your Facebook on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, and share your miracle. I am going to get mine today. How about you? I'm sure you're going to get yours. Thank you. See you there. Those who are far oh. away, I hope the counselors are everywhere to attend to them. When you finish where you are, if you are able to, uh, to see where there are other, who have others who have not been attended to, Shift down to there, attend to them, they come back to your position so that God will use you at the time of miracle to assist those who need assistance <coughs> or those who are deaf. You put your hand on the ears, the lame, you just hold them. As you try to raise them on the power, God will strike them. They start to walk in. Those who are blind, you put hand on their eyes. The Lord will heal them. Then you will let them out of the gate. It's happened after the prayer. Our children in their halls. Get ready, the Lord is going to bless you. Wherever you are, the word of God, the power of God travels more than lighting. If it touch you wherever you are, distance is no barrier with God. The Lord will touch you. Counsel us. When you finish, let us know. Hand over your sleep. To the supervisors who will don't take them to where they are to be taken to after the meeting. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for the touch of God upon your life. Tonight is your night. Tonight is my night. You will not escape the blessing today. The blessings will not escape you. There's a miracle attached to you. Miracles attached to you. They will descend upon you. You will be free and free indeed. God is not man that we line up wherever you are 
It touches millions at a time. It touches thousands at a time. It touches hundreds at a time. It touches fifties at a time. Tonight, it will touch you. Can you tell us where you finish? Wave your hand at me to show you are finished. Wherever you are, get ready for God's blessing. God will locate you tonight. Say amen. amen. Tell yourself, God will locate me today. His miracles will locate me today. His hands will locate me today. It shall be so. Counsel us if you have finished. Let's know, please. Counsel us at the middle. Have you finished? You finished there? Okay, God bless you. At my right hand side, have you finished? Right hand side, okay, God bless you. At my left hand side, have you finished? Have you? God bless you. Tell us, I know you're finished. Miracle upon everyone and even on our counselors in Jesus' name. I promised you, I was going to tell you a story. Should I? The last time, you know, I've been talking about we went there, we went there, we went there, we were there. And we're having like this same kind of global crusade. There was a minister, a mother, of course, a woman, and she had an accident. After that accident, something was wrong with the knee. Even though she had been healed of the accident. The pain was there. She couldn't lift the leg, move the leg, squat. And whenever she went to the toilet to ease herself, according to her own language, she did it like an animal because she couldn't bend the knees. Everything was still. And then the miracle global crusade came. You didn't respond to that one. And prayer was made. And after that prayer, the power of God from heaven touched her. Healed. And she even happens to be a preacher. Having a congregation as an overseer. And then she went to a church to tell them the story of the miracle. Listen to her yourself. Let her talk to you. I had an accident last year. This leg, right leg. After two months, I went back for harvest. The next following day, for me to go and ease myself, I can't squat. I started behaving like animals. You know how animals <laughs> go to toilet now? That is how I, that is how I was behaving. I can't squat. I will just stand and do everything that you know human beings can do to ease himself. For the past two weeks, 
That is how I will be going to the toilet and to what? To ease myself. I can't squat down. But in that crusade, I've never shared it. It's just a day or some two days I, I shared it with my husband. I was trusting God. I was doing like this. I was doing like this. Now, I got my healing in the first day. I was ignorant. The second day, I still repeated, I carry my healing. I take faith. I receive healing. After I came back from the crusade, after Papa has gone, and now the Holy Spirit said, go and try it. I went to my squatting toilet, intentionally to try myself. I found out that I'm squatting no more sleep, no more pain. God has healed me. God has saved me. He has healed me. This, that's why I said this crusade was ordained for me. It is for you. Tonight, it is for you. Don't worry about those blind eyes. Tonight is your night. I don't worry about, I can't squat. I can't stand. I can't walk. I can't run. Tonight is your night. Every work of the devil destroy tonight in Jesus' name. Where are you? Miracle is going to locate you right now. Where are you? Where are you? Miracle, healing, deliverance, the works of the devil destroyed tonight, out of your body, out of your life, in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand on yourself. When you hear the final amen, it is done. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. You are ready. Yes. It will come. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, I pray for everyone. According to your promise, you said, ask, it will be given unto you. Yes. Seek, you will find. Yes. No. It shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. I'm asking Lord for everyone here tonight. Healing in Jesus name. Blind eyes. Cataract. Glaucoma. Come out in Jesus name. Whatever is wrong. What your retina. A walk of creation right now upon those eyes and those nerves be healed in Jesus name deaf ears dumb tongues be healed be loosed be set free and those who have any brain problem any brain damage any brain that is not functioning as it ought to function be healed right now yeah. and those who have any swelling in their body goiter that goiter I command you come out in Jesus name yeah. swelling tummy come out in Jesus name yeah. fibroid be healed in Jesus name and yeah, be healed in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis or any other kind of swelling in your body, the touch of the Lord is upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Paralysis, be healed. Broken bones, be healed. Arthritis, be healed. With that hands, be healed. Short leg, grow out. And all the other internal problems like cancer, like ulcer, like TB, any other internal problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Everywhere now, miracle. Healing. Deliverance. Here, Amen. over the radio, Amen. over the television, Amen. everywhere, be healed.
healed in Jesus' name. Confirmation in your body. Confirmation in your life. You got it. The Lord put testimony in your mouth. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray.